Welcome back to the Luxury Live Show, Luxies. Hope you guys are doing well. Of course, my beautiful co-host today, she's wearing her beautiful scarf. I'm Yay. practicing, I'm practicing. <laughs> I, I think I got it. a hang of it. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I think I got a hang of it. But I think you have a really small neck because I feel oh. like I'm being strangled a little bit. But because it's silk, it's very soft. So kind of yeah. get used to it. But I think you have a small neck. I think I do. <laughs> I, I think yeah. I I do. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> but probably because you exercise, so you got more. Yeah, I think I got the muscles here that yeah. is like um, taking a bit of space. But otherwise, yeah. yeah, it's it's nice. It's I feel so I feel like I feel like Chinese New Year. I know it's very <laughs> nice. I'm just I'm just like ah, oh, you didn't bring it to Seattle, <laughs> but that's all good. So anyway, um, today we decided to change the topic because it was supposed to be a different topic, but. Since the new Chanel collection, the Fall Winter Act 2 runway collection is officially out, I think it's launching, already launched in many places or mm -hmm. about to launch. So we, well, I wanted, to, I wanted to do this instead. And also because I normally do a review, like a more in-depth review myself, but I decided this time I'm not going to do it. I wanted to do it more in the live. And then so I, you know, we both made sure to put in a lot of effort in our slides. So um, hopefully you guys enjoy that. And uh, I just told Kat to, you know, just choose whatever you like, and then I'll fill in kind of like the blanks because I want it to be more comprehensive. And uh, I just mixed it up. So the order is just the, two, the stuff that we both chose combined. So let me share the screen. Yeah, the last time I did it, when we did the live with uh, picking like Chanel, I think I picked stuff that I liked, but they were probably way out of my price range. I just liked them. So th sort of yeah. things that I picked, I liked, not necessarily I can afford or I will buy. So I think to this round, if I'm not mistaken, when I was doing it, I was picking things that I would actually consider buying. And there are a couple of yeah. things in this slide that I'm like, quite tempted to text mm. my essay to say yeah. do you have it <laughs> which i think i have texted her well, well we'll get we'll get to it when we reach yeah. there yeah let's get to it and before we even get there i wanted to do some housekeeping so if you're brand new to this show uh we usually do a topic so today will be the new collection and then the latter half of the show we take questions from the floor if you have questions for us make sure you type question marks in front it's just so much easier for, for us to see. Uh, and also, I'll just plug here. Uh, we haven't talked about our membership in a while. So if you are um, you know, enjoying the, the live show and you want to be part of a more intimate group, we both have memberships. We actually alternate between our channels. Again, this is a live show that we post on both our channels, but we alternate uh, between our channels every week. So the same with, goes with the membership. And if you're interested in joining, just go to our channel page and there's a join button. Same with Kat's channel. Okay. Oh, and there's two levels, by the way. Um, the Chanel collection. I think I was way more surprised than, you know, my first sort of uh, like judgment, you could say, <laughs> because after really looking into the collection and also i had a chance to visit the store even though they didn't have a lot of stock but i was still able to sort of see the colors and just the general vibe i was sur surprisingly um, um like happy with the collection i think this collection definitely from the point of view of what you can see online is tweed galore so it's mm -hmm. tweed 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 and it's so beautiful so um, like colorful, but in a good way. Very, very nice. Um, the colors also this season, there were a few unusual colors, not just always pink, always gray. There are some nice neutrals too, like that dark, rich brown and that um, olive green and that khaki, just really, really nice. Also, I find that the vibe is a little bit more vintage this round. The ready to wear is also spectacular. And unfortunately, even though I do find that the collection was really, really beautiful, um, there was like nothing available in my store when I went. 
<laughs> and in fact, I found out that there was like a lot of items that were not available, uh, not ordered at all. So they're not even gonna come to the store. So anyway, having said that, we're gonna get started with handbags. And I think both Kat and I chose the same bag. So this is her slide and this is my slide. I will just say that this bag to me was very attractive, not only because minis are always a good idea, but they did a great job on the shape. This is a very sort of vintagey, you know, the kind of like that same square mini that you would get in the past. So I love that. It's super boxy. It's cute. It's roomy. It even comes in two different sizes. But unfortunately, my store in Vancouver did not order any, not even in tweed, nothing, not neither sizes, nothing. You just can't even buy this. So I'm really mad about this because I would have loved to get this. This is anyway, beautiful. Cat. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure if the tweet version that the back pocket is a straight pocket because for it the is, longest it is. time, it is are. the same. Oh, yeah. Because for the longest time, I think in one of my videos oh, quite a while ago, I said, you know, if I had the power, I would do this change where I know a lot of people like the Mona Lisa pocket, but it is so not practical. For, mm -hmm. day, for today's lifestyle because you have bigger items, you've got your phone. So now that they have done a full pocket end to end, it to me, it's a very modern, uh, yeah. functional change. And I think this boxy like mini flap is also slightly larger than the original one. Uh, so it's one at vintage size. It is so nice. I do know Singapore has uh, brought in some of these pieces. I don't know what color. So if you are in Singapore, I would say go out and get this. Yeah. It's um it's going to be one of the highly highly popular uh, pieces that are coming out from this collection. Which is very surprising that uh like I don't know if it's ca across Canada, but like literally in Vancouver there is none. There's none. You can't even get it in patent leather if you wanted to. Like there's just none. And I, I'm just so shocked because this mini is one of the favorite shape and size and, and just overall, it's a great value. I mean, look at the price. I, I was shocked to see that it's in the 4,000s because I thought all the minis are in the 5,000s now, including mm. the all the classic minis. They are at least 5,000. And for those who will live in Singapore, because I know we have a lot of Singaporean viewers, you do have to add tax and conversion rate. So just add about 20 to 25% just to get your price. Um, but it's still like, I'm like, what? Like, why did we not order this? I'm just so shocked. So those well, of you I who are in, ca in, uh, in Canada, outside of Vancouver, let me know if you, your store gets this because I'm just so mad and I'm sure it's already <laughs> gone. So it's not like well, I can get it Well, maybe it's because of the, the other design, which is what we were talking about, that maybe because there is another square flap that is coming out this season. That one is not as good though, but yes. It's not as good, but one. it could be the reason why your buyer didn't buy as many because it has the additional top handle feature. I don't know. They didn't buy any of these. Like they just didn't buy this style at all. So I'm wow. not sure. I don't know if it's really a shortage or if it's just a decision mm. corporate, like not corporate, but like kind of like the decision of the store. Style wise, I'm not sure where they're going, why they didn't, because everything about this bag is so cool. I'm going anyway. to pull a comment before you go yeah. to the next slide sure. from Rebecca. This bag is so cute in person. There were two of them at the store when I went in last week. The tweet is so soft, fits normal sized phone, CC pouch, and sunglasses. It was at the Neiman's in the US. What? I hope you got it. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're giving me FOMO, Rebecca. <laughs> I it's like if we wanted this. to get it, you can't even here. It's oh like so gosh. frustrating. And you guys know how I feel about my minis. I would have been happy to get even a tweed one. I'm not even joking at this point. <laughs> anyway, uh, enough about this mini. Moving on. Oh, this is Kat's slide. So okay. I'll let her. All right. So I definitely the color attracted me because I like green. And I thought this would be quite a neutral green. And for, surprisingly, I kind of like the zip feature because maybe I just came out from a holiday. 
So my brain is still, ooh, this will make a great holiday travel bag. Plus it's caviar, it's got the zip function. So my boss actually has a very similar bag, but the bigger, the, the jumbo size, it has a zip, it has a flap, and that was in 2015. And I love her bag because it's very squishy. It's caviar as well. And it's just so easy. It's like a, it's like an easy classic bag. So when I saw this and I was like, oh my gosh, it's like a shrunken version of her bag. I was immediately drawn to it. The zip is very smooth from what I recall. I don't know about this. It's caviar. And I, yeah, I'm very attracted to it. The price, okay, so I don't know why, again, my phone is stuck to the Malaysian, <laughs> the Malaysian app. I have deleted it. I have reinstalled it. I have like, I don't, I've done so many things to it, but yet I still get it installed back in ring. I for anyway. So ring it. So just take it. Um. So if you're in the US or uh, US, you divide it by almost four point five, and then for the Canada, it's about divide by three. So it's about six. It's a little bit more pricey than the um, the other bag. Uh, the, the mm -hmm. mini flap, the square. This but is I bigger feel, though. Yeah, it's it is twenty one centimeter is. across. Mm -hmm. So it's actually wider than a rectangular mini. Yeah, so I, I'm i attracted to this and I actually did text on my essay. I said, I'm, you might, <laughs> if this comes in, I would like to take a look at it. I'm just curious to see if it is how I imagine it to be, the squishy, very easygoing bag that is in my kind of favorite color and it would be great for the upcoming travel boom. That's going mm. to be happening now. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I just like it. It's very cute. And I like that it you can double the chain up. They did the four grommets on this one. And the size is super reasonable for nowadays. The phones are so big, especially if you go for max size phones. And the zipper feature just makes it more secure. I mean, yep. um, I thought about whether I would like this bag. I don't think I would buy it myself because... Um, I don't want to have two steps to get in my bag, but I don't yes. think that this is incredibly hard to get in either because the turn lock is so easy. It's like literally you can do it in your, in your sleep and the zipper is just one swipe. So it should be fine. But I, I do agree that it would be a great travel sort of, you know, your your Chanel, not throw around, but like, you know, your Chanel very casual bag. And I like exactly. that they did the double chain. It's really clever. and. Of course, it, it's sort of, again, with the vintage vibe and the colors this season are so unusual, but in a nice way, because you don't see these greens so much at Chanel, I find. Mm -hmm. And But they're doing quite a bit of greens this season. Mm -hmm. So like last season, this season, so I guess maybe it's like the, it's the in, it is the in color. It is. Yeah. So it's, if, you are, yeah. if you're a green person, you're a fan of the shades. It's really time to get it because I think once they exhaust the colors, then you won't see it for quite a while again. Yeah, but what about what I like about this season's greens is that they are very neutral. Mm -hmm. So it you know not everyone's into a really bright green. Even emerald can be too bright for some people, but a khaki is definitely neutral. And even that olive green almost looks I don't know stunning. Okay, next. <laughs> okay, so this is also mine. Again, I don't know if uh, they have this in black, but I think black would be stunning. What caught my attention was the chain. It kind of looks like an improved version of the Pearl Crush. Mm. It feels, I feel like you can actually adjust this uh, strap and make it as a shoulder bag. You could even lengthen it and it becomes a crossbody bag. You cannot go wrong with a good camera style handbag. Uh, great for traveling. And if you kind of want that traveling bag, you want that little, you know, bougie traveling bag, but you don't want to have fist, I mean, fuss around with the flap and the zip. This is straight in. Zip, easy access. I love the CC design. So uh, if you go onto app, you can actually expand it. It's got a bit of um, etching on it. So it's kind of unique as well. It's slightly larger. And the price, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's about 6000 Yeah, 6000 Singapore dollars. I would say it's the average prices right now for Chanel mini bags. Yeah. 
But the details on the strap, uh, I, I think it's really nice. I, I totally agree because they, they add, ever since they added the, I think it's called the, it's called the Pearl Crush, right? Pearl Crush? Yeah, the Pearl Crush ball. So ever since they added that line where you can adjust the chain, a lot of people uh, are really liking that new addition. And I think especially in Asia, because there's a lot of short people in Asia, obviously. <laughs> so um, I think it's a fan favorite for a lot of just different height people, uh, but especially the shorter ones, because uh, I know Chanel, you know, they, I don't know, their straps sometimes are too short, sometimes are too long, but in general, I think having an adjustable version is always nice. So yeah, very, very nice details on this. And the, the color is just so unusual. You know, once this season passes, and I wonder if Chanel will continue to repeat colors as often as they did in the past few seasons, but I feel like this season they did something quite unusual and I like what I see. But I only started really noticing that after I went to the store because when I just did my first impression looking at the, like at these bags even, and even looking back at the runway, I was kind of mm, meh. Cause it was like very tweed, but then mm -hmm. when you really look into the details, that's when you really see it. So this next bag is that other square that we were referring to earlier and this bag we did order but not in all the colors which is again very frustrating because i wanted it in white color mm. i wanted that white one on top it's such wow. a cute size white huh i know but it has a handle so i'm okay with that and it's caviar yeah it's caviar that's the thing this season they brought back the caviars on the mini so I yeah, think that's this why I didn't order any bag. of the originals mini flap for you because the the mini flap in that first one is very traditional. Yeah, the handle feature is now the in feature. Everyone does prefer. Mm -hmm. After a while, you get used to having something that you can hold the bag. So maybe that's the choice that your Canada store made. Uh, perhaps, but um, yeah, even with this style, we only ordered, well, you see those colors that I inserted in the middle. Uh, we only ordered the dark brown, the navy, the khaki, the pink, and the black, and then that's it. Like, I, we didn't even order any tweed, because I, I think the tweed is really nice. Look at that tweed one on the right side. By the way, that little tag is detachable. Mm. So you can put it on something else too, which is so fun. Like they, they thought of these things and the shape is not like we've seen in uh, recent years. So it's very, very kind of vintage -y vibe. Uh, mind you, the, the size will be deceiving because even though it looks re decently sized because it's stitched on the outside and how, you know, how like it curves in, you actually do lose some space on the inside, I have seen some um, people's comments about this bag where you can't fit a Max phone. So uh, that is unfortunate actually. But aside from that, the style wise, I'm really, really attracted to it. Obviously mm -hmm. I was only interested in the white and that's the only color they didn't order. <laughs> it's very frustrating. It's very really strange. <laughs> but you know, yeah. I, I don't know which live you told me before, but you said that people in Canada, like in the Western side, they prefer darker colors. They do, they do. Yeah, it's like dark, like black and yeah. you know, all the darker colors. You know, for lighter colors, it's just not, it's not as um, used. It's not as popular. It's not as popular. It's not yeah. as sought after because of your seasons. Because you yes. don't get to use them. You need, use the, you need to use light colors for, say, a couple of months in the Two, whole three year. Months, yeah. Yeah, and then kind of store it away because all your dark coats come out, all your dark jeans come out. And uh, yeah, so maybe that's why. So, maybe that's <laughs> why. Because they ordered the light pink, which is so strange. But even though they did order the light pink, uh, I think, you know, when I say they did order, it, it doesn't mean they ordered a ton, right? You get maybe mm -hmm. two, three of, of each color and the black is the most, I think. So uh, but even then, I uh, my essay told me that they've only received 10% of the stock because of all the, I don't know, the delays, the whatever is happening in the world. So it's not like you can't even see them when I went to the store. I couldn't see any of this. But uh, I saw other bags in the, in the colors, um, in these colors. I saw the dark brown color on the 19. I saw the khaki color on the 19. 
I also saw um, the pink and the other olive green color on, an, on another bag. Anyway, this is the same bag, but kind of that rectangular size and it's much bigger actually. So you can see on the model how it falls on her. Again, there's just something about this vintage vibe that I am really attracted to. I don't know if I'll like it forever, but at the moment after seeing this, I'm like, oh, actually I do like it. Um, that's the thing because it's kind of that more, you know, the, the piping, everything, it's a little different than I'm used to. So I like what I see. It also has that front pocket when you open the flop and I believe there's a back pocket too, which is very nice. I think these are very functional, practical aspects of these seasonal bags. And for this size, cause this is just the size, well, it's this different shape. It's almost the same price, only $300 more. Even though this is a bigger bag, I will probably still prefer this size, but in anybody who's looking for the bigger version, they're getting a great price for, for a much larger bag. And again, these are some of the colors that it comes in, in caviar, patent wow. leather. It comes in different tweeds. Wow. It's very stunning, actually. You know, when I first saw this runway, it... I don't know why it just didn't click in my head I know. that, that Same. this current that the actual boutique launch was the runway that I saw like six months ago. I don't know. I actually saw this. I saw this. Um, I watched the the, the, the fashion show, and I was mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, so much tweed and this bag. I was kind of attracted to it. This particular there was kind of like two. There's one more like a blue, more blue version. Like oh my gosh, there's so much tweed, mm -hmm. and when it launched, everybody was saying. There's so much tweet. There's so much tweet. Mm -hmm. But I could not put the two together. I was like, oh, I didn't remember seeing a lot of tweet. And then when you told me it was this particular fashion show, I was like, oh my gosh, it's finally here. Yeah. <laughs> this fashion show that I watched felt like yesterday, but felt a long time ago. And I remembered this bag. I didn't pick it this time because, well, I saw other bags, but this was definitely one of the more attractive tweet bag with handle that I saw, you know, as they, as the models walked out, really nice. Yeah. And also, again, this is a seasonal offering, so it's not going to be completely the same, but it kind of reminds me of the classic flop because the shape and the size and the fact that you have that added seasonal handle, that little tag that is detachable, I think it's just fun. Mm -hmm. And for the price, and we're talking Chanel prices, right? We all know Chanel is like crazy price already. For what it is, like at this price, it's reasonable in my opinion. It's at today's price, this is reasonable. So yeah, go figure. <laughs> but we didn't order this either. So forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> we only ordered one colors, but I don't even remember which one. So anyway, it doesn't matter. It's not available. <laughs> that's the that's the disappointing part, because that's why I said I love this collection, but it's not even available. So What's the point, right? I mean, it's not going to be like that everywhere, but it's not available here, so I can't even buy it. And I can't even talk about it from a point of view of like seeing it in person and then talk about it, right? So I can only imagine it. So I selected this next one. Um, and this one is a little lower on the, on the selection because it's just tweed and the interior is also fabric. So you're really getting, you're paying for the brand and you're not getting like, leather or anything like that, which I know a lot of people don't mind. But what's stunning about this bag, again, is that added handle. And they did kind of like that two texture, you know, they did metal and tweed. It's it's mm. quite interesting. It's nice. And on top of that, that longer strap, it has a lot of CCs on the strap. It's really intricate. It's very beautiful. So it almost gives me the 19 vibe slash, uh, I don't know, some sort of seasonal tweed bag. Um, it's super cute. I just think it's super, super cute. Yeah, now that you say the details, I can see it. When I first saw this bag on the app, I was just, you know, it just, I just kind of scrolled past it. Yeah. But now that you've mentioned, you know, the different material on the law, I mean, on the chain and then the CCs, now I know why the price is higher because there yeah. a lot of thought has went into this bag. Yeah. And you know, it because it has sort of that vibe of the 19 vibe and the 19 bag is expensive. So I'm guessing that's where they are, um, you know, getting you. 
for for it. Yes, the even the lock where the CC is, it's so cute, right? They did that yeah. in Creed as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's very cute. Again, I, I didn't see that in store, but I, I just thought I would mention it because it looked really, really nice. Okay, I had to pull out the Doville, even though I would never buy this. This is the giant Doville. So this is the the large so the large size. But I just really love how playful it is. Yes. So yeah, so they use the more traditional black and white tweed on the background, which is very nice and very neutral. But then they added these colorful, chunky, kind of like chubby leathers. <laughs> it's it's so fun. I love it. And they played with all kinds of colors. So it didn't matter if you just like green or pink or orange or yellow. It has all of it. <laughs> I, I well, This was one of the Deauvilles that I looked at it. But for me, yeah. I was thinking like Deauville. Yeah. But it really stands out as a piece. Like you said, you know, the chub, the chubby seas. It's, it reminds me of like, you know, those alphabet nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> that you just want to like, oh, they're so cute. Yeah. So... Beautiful. This is a beautiful Deville. Yeah. So I tried to buy this bag, but since they don't have it in the size small, I was told. Either they don't have it or we didn't order it. I'm not sure which one it is. Then I'm like, oh no, I can't do the large again. Yeah. I was going to give the Deville another try, but you know, because this one is really stunning. I was very, very attracted to it. And I would, I would give this a try if they actually had it in a size small, but large oh, is too large it will be even so on this model cute in the probably... small. yeah you see how like wide the bag is on the model and she's probably really tall so well tall but skinny but how how much with it it's like a luggage it's too big yeah but it's yeah. cute but it's very cute i think they did a great job on this one okay i wanted to show the so, so these are just like, you know, kind of not classics, but, you know, you kind of call them classics because cocoa handles, right? Um, so, yes, all the cocoa handle size are back and they did a slew of different colors. Again, these are the stunning colors that I wanted to bring to your attention. That rich brown that almost looks burgundy, but it's really brown. Um, I don't know. I just thought it looked really stunning and I'm sure it would look really 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 stunning in person unfortunately i didn't get to see that color on a caviar i saw it on a 19 but i didn't see it on the caviar because i feel like on the 19 depending on the leather uh texture um it doesn't reflect the color the same way so i would have in been interested to see it on the caviar i did see the you know that olive green color that you see here on a on a small size coco hondo and it's very cute it looks kind of muddy and not interesting, almost yellow online, but in person, it's actually really, really stunning. It's such a great neutral and it would go well with um, any sort of uh, fall colors. It will mm. go well with maroon, uh, sort of like brown camels, um, but in the summer, it will go well with white and yeah, shades of greens, like neutrals, like taupe, so it's a very unusual but stunning, stunning color in person. And yeah, all the cocoa handles are back. I was also told that the extra mini cocoa handle was supposed to be discontinued or they're thinking about that. So I don't know if that is true, if you guys heard about this. And if that is true, uh, those of you who want it, <laughs> may want to get your hands on it quicker. <laughs> wow. Um, I like this color, actually, when I first saw it. Mm. I didn't know that it was called olive green. but Oh, no, I it. call it olive green. Oh, I'm you call it sure olive green. green. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of yellow, but it's not It's not that kind of yellow where it's sickly. It's, yeah. it's like an autumn yellow, you know, like the leaves. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. It's a really beautiful color, actually. Yeah, you're right. It probably looks muddy when you see it. Like, everybody will look at it like, ugh. Yeah, Ooh. it's not nice online, but once I saw it on per in person... And especially in this texture, I saw it on the, in the on the small size cocoa handle. It was very very nice. But again, like like I said earlier, like we said earlier, these lighter colors are not popular here. That's why I was like so surprised that there were so many lying around <laughs> in the small size cocoa. I was like, why are all these colors still here? And then there was a couple of pink, but then all the reds. I think there was 
yeah, there's a dark red, but it's not really that dark. It's kind of lipstick, but just maybe a shade darker. It's it's quite nice. I like the red too. Um, the the dark brown is the one that I couldn't see, and I wish that I did, because I think it really will look very stunning in person as well. Oh, I love this. It's making me want to go to the store. <laughs> just like Linda says, I'm going to pull a comment. Linda, told myself to just focus on H. Uh, now, I know, hard law, I feel yeah. like I need to get check out Chanel. I know, Chanel always pulls you back. you got to have... Yeah. You gotta have like really strong willpower just to not look at any of these collections. But honestly, when you look at it, you're like, oh, come it's check the it phone out. speaking. Because even if you don't look, you know what you're missing out. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Like, I I did that a couple of times, and it was the worst mistake that I've ever. You know, I missed out on the top handle caviar, and it's just, oh man. I, I don't know. I, I don't know which way is better to to not look and focus on age or to just buy it because life is too short. Like I don't. Life know. is too short. That's why I texted my essay on the khaki <laughs> bag. I was like, okay, that's it. I'm just doing it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah, we're not here to give advice. We're just here to discuss the collection. So yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Okay, it's we're tough. moving on to the small leather goods, and uh, I didn't pick too many, but we always get asked about the walk and we always answer the questions about the walk uh, that we we're not fans of it. And we don't, well, I don't, I don't own one, but if there's any walk that I would buy, if I were to ever buy one is the 19 walk uh, mm. only because it has the double chain feature. And I think, I think, I think the 19 one is also a bit roomier. It also looks like, it would be an easier one to carry. And it's more versatile, the fact that you do have a top handle. And I'm not saying that, okay, this is like a wedding bag or like not that kind of versatile, but you can, I guess, if you travel with it. So yeah, I think the 19 would be my choice. Though they do come in all kinds of different variations of leather and tweed. I thought this one was cute. I don't know if I'll ever get it, but I'll just, I'm just saying if I had to get one, I will probably get this one. <laughs> because mm, you like the additional top handle i would still I get the traditional walk yeah. uh which is the caviar black just because now they have changed the button into a magnet mm -hmm. but i would not have said this a couple of years ago i would say no don't get the walk the only get the walk with the turn lock but now mm -hmm. that it's a magnet i actually think the original just the classic walk would be a good day-to-day -day bag now mm -hmm. that everything is shrunken you don't even need your wallet anymore uh i like this but i wonder if it's going to be really chunky like heavy and all i don't know oh uh, it possibly possibly yeah again this one is a seasonal one i i do think that there are chanel 19 wallets on chains that do have that turn lock um Ooh. this is just the one that they have right now right now yes yeah but it's pricey, huh? Look at that. That's four thousand dollars. It is pricey, dollars. but you know what? You know what, Kat? I was looking at all their other walks, and they're more expensive. What? Yeah, this is already one of the cheapest one. What? Yeah, I'm not <laughs> kidding. I'm like, I, I, I mean, I know it's fabric, but still, this is then already the cheapest one. Worth it, it among all the walks because it's got so much detail on it. Yeah, I know. Wow. This is why I chose this one too, because I looked at other walks and I'm like, why is it is almost the price of that mini that we saw the first one? And I'm like, why wouldn't I just buy the mini then? <laughs> well, because can't. it's not available, I know. But <laughs> the point is, I already was like, oh, okay, this is already the better price one. So I picked this one. Plus, I like the aesthetic of this one. Yeah, it's pretty. Um, I like the colors on it. The, the tweet yeah. is blue and pink and black. This combination, it's it's modern, but it's it's and it still has that element of being very like soft. Yes, but it's young. The pink makes it really young. Yes, agree. And um, yeah, I, I was. That's why I said I didn't pick too many SLGs because every other SLGs, I'm talking about that round clutch or those like nano bags that research fans of my goodness they're like three four five thousand and i'm just like 
I, and that is before tax too, right? All our all the prices in Canada are before tax. I, I just uh, it blew out blew my mind. I I just <laughs> I can't I can't even I didn't even select anything else except that one walk. But I, I think didn't, I didn't pick any still... SLGs. I think did I pick any SLG? I think I didn't because I was firstly it didn't wow me. Mm. And yeah, you're right. The prices was just a little bit eyebrow raising. Yeah, they they were like handbag price level. So I just I just couldn't. But for the smaller, real small leather goods, I think they're still good to buy. Um, I'm a big fan of the uh, card holder, the flat one. So those are still very reasonable price. It's just like, you know, around 500. I think the wallet, the long wallet, which is not popular anymore, but it's so reasonable price wise, I think, compared to, you know, the grand scheme of things. And we talked about colors of wallet, right? So this is a dark brown. It's a great and very auspicious color to get in a wallet. Uh, and then if you're not into any of those, I think the, the pouch for a catch-all is still always a great idea. So yes, um, everyone, if you do not have a long wallet, you need to get yourself a long wallet. Even if you I don't, don't have one, it, you need it. It will help I you know. save money. Go to watch the luxury live show on wallets because I'm telling you, <laughs> feng shui is a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, should I get the, I mean, I do like this brown color. It's just, I, I haven't seen it on the caviar. I haven't seen it. And they also do it on the khaki color for this one. So they do. Oh, no, wait. The khaki color is only in lambskin. Too bad. But they do do it on that lighter green color in caviar. Just don't get green red. Is a good color. Green is a good color for a wallet. Green is a good color. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just don't yeah, get red. You get yourself a big... <laughs> Big wallet, do not fold your money. Stuff the wallet with lots and lots of money because it's auspicious. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, do, do I need to be fully, fully, um, <laughs> you know, superstitious about it? I'm not sure because, again, I don't have a long wallet. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, I have those shoes. You, did Not you, the season yeah. one, but the, you know, the classic one, but it's the same right. thing. Right. Yeah. So I, I didn't pick, I think I picked, this is the only pair of shoes I picked, if I'm, mm. if I recall correctly. I really like this. When I saw this, I thought, well, if I'm not going to get any tweed bag anymore, because I have had my adventure with material bags, I still do like tweed. I think tweed is such a classic material and it's really attractive. So when I saw this, I thought, oh my gosh, it has some element of tweed. Yeah. The CC uh, logo is, if I'm not, yeah, it's like a, it's like one of those puffed out 3D um, tweed. Yeah. It's really attractive. I know shoes are the worst things you want to get in this kind of very uh, soft material, delicate. But, you know, whether it's leather or it's not leather, shoes are meant to be worn. And if you have nice looking shoes, you kind of feel put together. So I like sports shoes. So this is very, very attractive to me. And I think the price is not too bad. So if you divide yeah. this by three, it's only a thousand, thousand odd dollars yeah. for Chanel shoes, which some shoes are so, so much more. 100% I, agree. I If I don't already have my one, which is a classic one, I think it was not classic when I bought it. It was the seasonal one, but now it's a Rev. So because it's just black and white, mm. it's just so nice. Like this one just has tweed elements and grays. And I just love how they did it. The laces, uh, yes. the CC tweed thingy, even that tongue is tweed. It's so cute. <laughs> It is. So yeah. I have texted my essay <laughs> about <laughs> these shoes. And uh, again, the few things that I texted her, they are, she told me straight out, she said, oh, I'm going to try, but they yeah. are in high demand. Like high. I'm like, what? I think nowadays that is the issue. It's not just Chanel, but it's definitely uh, very much worse than before like they just you know if you if your essay is nice they'll say they'll try if they're not nice they'll just say they don't have it 
Yeah, so um, my essay was kind of nice. She just said, okay, mm, I'll try. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So there's one high demand. I think I have another one, which I, I totally just said, that is the most ridiculous thing to be high <laughs> demand. <laughs> but you never know, because once she knows about it, and they do trickle in, like I said, my essay said that only 10% of stuff came in. So they do trickle in, but apparently they're still waiting on stuff from all the way from Métier d'Art, which is two seasons on Two seasons ago, they're still waiting on stock that was supposed to come in from two seasons ago. So you just never know. True. Um, which actually reminds me, I didn't reply to the shoe essay. He said that those sandals are in and I, I'm supposed to go in today, but I didn't reply to him because I was too busy. And the thing oh, is, those sandals are from two seasons shoes. ago. <laughs> like, I can't even wear sandals anymore. It's so cold. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I should reply to him after. That I couldn't go. But anyway, um, yeah, it's just too bad. <laughs> I also chose one pair of shoes only, and I also have these, and I highly recommend these. So these are the rain boots that came out last year, actually. And then they re-released it again this year and they made it a rev, which I think they totally did a great job in these. It's just rain boots but they are so comfortable and for some reason you would think that rubber boots that look kind of chunky are not gonna be very attractive on the feet it actually some somewhat makes you slimmer because i think these are so chunky it makes your body like the rest of your body look slimmer in any case i bought them because well i live in vancouver it rains a lot and so i will get a lot of use out of these but um chanel shoes and i'm talking about the casual shoes not the dressy shoes such as their runners and their boots are very, very comfortable. They just did something right about the, the cushioning on the bottom, like the foot support. And um, I, I, I love them. So when I got them, they only were available in black. But see, they, you know, they did the screen and then they did a, I think they did burgundy as well. And also this uh, camel color in the middle. Uh, so this is just a short version, which I totally recommend. This is more wearable. They also have a huge, really long one that goes up all the way to your thigh. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend those, but if you're very fashionable and you can pull it off, then go for it. <laughs> I almost picked this, but again, the way I did it, I was thinking of like, would I wear it straight away? Right. But for me, this wouldn't make sense locally, even though we uh, it rains a lot here. It's too hot for you. Probably. It's too hot. But yeah. if I lived in a country like yours, this is... Or in Seattle, so... you would need these. Oh, yeah, in Seattle, yeah. yeah. I would totally get these. These are so... Like, I've seen so many pictures. It's, it's like, so ridiculous. <laughs> the rubber boots. But yet, so functional. They're the most comfortable rubber boots I ever owned. I don't even like rubber boots, but I actually like these boots so much that I, at first when I bought them, I thought I needed to get a second pair, even though I haven't even worn them yet. So that's how good they were. So I actually really like it. Um, they did increase the price by quite a bit, by the way. Quite a bit. When they They're first launched this one, it was, but that was last year though. It was eleven seventy five, I think. So almost $300 extra now. But it doesn't matter. I mean, it's Chanel, right? You're going to pay for it if you like it. So, You know, if this shoe, like if you are in Singapore and he's a really famous comedian, Pua Chu Kang. Okay. <laughs> and this comedian, he he's known for like his just crazy curly hair and yellow rubber boots. Mm. So people will say, oh, those are Pua Chu Kang boots, but make them <laughs> Chanel. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, but seriously, uh, even though they did increase the price, it's totally worth it. If if you do need boots, if you don't need boots, please don't get them. It's a waste of money mm -hmm. then. <laughs> These. I picked this because it is so attractive. There is something about a nice bucket hat that after I came back from my holiday, I was told I'm totally into it. I think I went to a few stores in Seattle and I was trying hats. I'm like, oh my god cat looks good in a hat <laughs> i've never i have i don't wear hats and when i saw this online i was immediately drawn to the black against pink it's mm. really youthful it's it it's just uh, i don't know it's just playful 
So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I kind of like this. Having said that, I did not text my essay on this because <laughs> again, it's too hot here yeah. <laughs> to wear. But if I was somewhere in Canada, this would be one of the first things that I would try and get. Mm -hmm. It has, comes in black, something that's more neutral. Maybe you can wear it a lot more all year round. But I still think this gray with white and black base with that pink, it's so pretty. 100%. Don't get the black one. I remember I said I made the mistake of buying too many black, uh, black hats. Black bags are another story. Black hats, it actually wears you down because we already have black hair. Oh, that's I mean, true. good thing our skin is fair, so it does have contrast. But like black hats really do kind of is more somber, really like it doesn't brighten like it doesn't brighten you. So even when I'm wearing a black coat, I rather still wear a, a bright hat. Mm. It just somehow contrasts. It makes it's it's almost like wearing white shoes. It's the same, but it's just on your head. So I would totally go with that tweed, uh, the pink and the white black tweed as well. Yeah, pretty. I have too many bucket hats, so I can't I, I can't buy anymore. <laughs> and I have too many of these too. So <laughs> <laughs> again, a cap. I don't know if maybe in store they have a version that's a bit lighter because the CC on this doesn't come out as much. Mm. But again, if they did, oh my gosh, I'd get a cap. Because I, I think I saw yours. You have like a gray. Yeah, yeah. I have the oh. hound's tooth. Yeah. Oh my, so pretty. Because it's kind of oversized. It makes it, it actually is. makes your, <laughs> it makes your head look smaller yeah. than yes. it actually it's it's just kind of fun and playful, but it's still functional. Because if you live in a cold country, whether yeah. it's autumn or spring, even spring, right? A lot of the heat like escapes from your head. Like you are sort of protected. So having this really bougie hat or cap is so functional. Again, I would not get it in Singapore, <laughs> but if I was traveling a lot, oh my gosh, it's either this cap or the bucket hat because it's just mm. it's just a beautiful, fun accessory that's also functional. Yeah, I totally agree. Hence my huge collection of hats, which I'm trying <laughs> to not look at hats, but I can't help it. Even at Hermes, I was just looking, like, I just, I had to browse on the hat section too. And I'm like, oh, uh, I'm like, okay, no, I, I better not. And good thing they don't even have the color I wanted. So <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh, I like the, I actually wanted a beret. But they oh, only they had a beret. Boring. Yeah, even this season. I actually almost, oh, cute. right. <laughs> it's cute. It's really mm, cute. Yeah. Actually, berets are quite easy to wear, and also they don't obstruct your your field of vision. Because with hats, with the caps especially, bucket hats too, when they sit a bit low. But with the caps, with the visor thing, um, it does obstruct your field of vision a bit. So if you're wearing sunglasses, it will push it ah, down. So good point. Um, yeah, that's why I I was like, oh, now I need a beret because I have all these hats that. If I wear them, I have to either not wear sunglasses or I have to wear them when it's really cold. So I don't mind that there's a hat kind of like blocking my vision. But um, it's, a, it's sort of like you can't win it all. But <laughs> okay, this is mine as well. So I picked this because, you know, a black jacket is obviously Chanel's, uh, what, what Chanel is famous for. But I love a hint of pink. So when mm. I saw this, I thought, wow, when I go back to the office, if one day I need to be bougie, this would be a jacket that I I would invest in. <laughs> the word is invest because it's yeah. so expensive. So if you think that as like $10,000, it's so much money. It's like buying a handbag. But I guess a good black jacket would be uh, an investment in your closet. I love the button details. I love the pink that's coming through against the black on the tweet and then you got this really vibrant pink color that's underneath when you fold it out yeah i think the pink against the black is what got me into saying i like this particular black jacket from chanel oh okay because i was wondering why you picked this one i didn't pick this one specifically because even though i did like the shape of the jacket and i do like the colors too but it wasn't the classic cc button mm. so i didn't pick it 
But yeah, yeah okay, now that you said that because of the pink, you like it, I agree. The pink is it, very nice for sure. Yeah. What do you think of her necklace? I think it's super I expensive anyway, but I'm just asking. Yeah. I don't know. Like from <laughs> nearby, if it's nearby, it looks like a heart. But if you see mm -hmm. that further picture, the one in the middle, the second from the left, it looks like just one black ball. Mm, so I, agree. I think it's it too doesn't, black. Um, yeah, it's too black and it's just like a ball. It just doesn't stand out. So yeah, I'm not. It doesn't. Really I'm just wondering because I we by the way we didn't pick any jewelry between Kat and I, so I'm just wondering how many people are actually interested in the jewelry this season. Um, it's not that I don't think they're nice, but I think the jewelry prices have just um. I mean, I, I keep saying skyrocketed before, but it's just unreasonable at this point. And I didn't think that they were so standout that I needed to pick something. I mean, I do like the heart. And they had the, the heart uh, pin, I mean, brooch, which is kind of like puffy as well. And they have it in all, in this black lambskin, but they also have it in tweed. The tweed ones I actually really like. But to spend, uh, I can't remember, I think it was a thousand over was tax to spend that on a brooch i'm just i'm just done with that kind of spending on on fashion jewelry so it's been um, it's just too much now it Maybe is before that it was expensive but it's still pricey in no it's still I, I'm not it's not reason it's never reasonable but it's still <laughs> you can swallow the price yes. because you know you can't get that kind of intricate designs and uniqueness if you were to go with real fine jewelry gold. So they're just Correct. a few fun pieces that is pricey, but it gives you that uh, um, yeah, fun element to your outfit. But now the prices of these fine jewelry is just so astronomical that it really makes you question your sanity. <laughs> You're like, yeah. wait a minute. It's not that intricate anymore. It's just a bobble, like a like a hot <laughs> bobble. Pricing at so much, it's yeah. It it really is not. Um, yeah, like you said, skyrocketed. Yeah, it it it's also not. Yeah, it's also like we can't swallow it anymore. I think that is exactly how I feel because I I truly love my costume jewelry, and you guys know that. I will always want to buy costume jewelry. In fact, I even asked to look at the costume jewelry when I was there because that's what I do. I always look at whatever is there. And then before I leave, I always look at the costume jewelry just to see if there's, for by chance, anything that I would be interested in. But then, uh, well, the tray was empty, first of all. <laughs> but then, uh, you know, just looking online, I was just like, wow, wow, wow. Like, I couldn't even pick anything to, to consider. Anyway. Uh, I think that's yours too. Yep. So this is the cardigan. Again, I I looked at it. I thought, wow, this is a pretty cardigan. It's not so much the the inner top. It's just that out, outer piece. I can't tell what is the embroidery on it. But to me, I can imagine wearing this very often when I go to the office, uh, even if I'm not traveling, because it does get really chilly in the office. This would look so good when you have to go for meetings that it's not too formal that you need to black jacket, but something that, you know, you're wearing your office clothes, but you've got to rush in for a meeting, just put this over. It's just really soft and subtle, but still very work appropriate. Price-wise, I'm not familiar with ready-to-wear pricing, but this is in the 6000 It is a very expensive <laughs> jacket. It is sorry, a cardigan. <laughs> But if you get a That's lot, why of I didn't pick it. it. <laughs> yeah, but if you can get a lot of use out of it, I think yeah, this is true. even more user friendly than the cardigan that was in the previous season, which was beautiful. True. The one with lots of CCs and all of that. That is fantastic. It's very fashion forward. But if you want to use it in a work setting, for me, I don't think I could because it's just a bit too loud. You know, you're going to a meeting with your bosses. Yeah, or that one is your too clients is like. Put a, put a CC jacket over a cardigan. You want to get your money's worth. It might be a bit too much. But this, to me, is more subtle and very work appropriate. Very everyday. You can use it for traveling. I think if you're okay to get it you know, used up, the price is okay. 
That's true. Like if you're going from that point of view, absolutely, I agree. Uh, it's very neutral. It's all year round too because it has a bit of a bright gray on top. I would totally wear it in the summer if it's not too hot. We we get pretty cold summer days sometimes too. So, uh, just wanted to draw your attention to her boots. So these are the other ones that I said. You know the rubber boots that go all the way to your thigh. The, these ones. And remember, these models are like six feet tall. Okay, so on us it'll probably. <laughs> In the crotch or something. It's really, really high, probably. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you can pull it off, hey, more power to you. That's yours too. Oh, yes. Okay, another jacket. So again, I'm in this um, mindset of work because here in Singapore, we're all going back to the office, even I'm getting like, it's just an office kind of cardigan jacket um, that is... I see versatile for work settings, meetings, you sitting at your desk that doesn't have too much of the CCs, you know, it's not too loud. I like this black and white. You can't go wrong with a black and white tweed. It gives a bit of bomber jacket feel as well. So the only thing is the price. So would mm. I go with this or would I go with the first pick, which is the pink and black? Um... If I had to say, okay, I'm only got budget for one, I would personally go with this one uh, just mm. because I feel I will get more use out of it from traveling, from work and uh, and events, even events. Yeah, this is a good choice. And I totally see this as being your style too because it has more of a bomber um, feel to it, but it's still uh, like the print and even the cutting is still very, um, yeah, it's very versatile. I, I like it. But it, it wasn't my choice because uh, bombers, even though I don't mind them, uh, I guess I wouldn't buy Chanel bombers. I think mm. the next jacket is my jacket. And I'm I'm seriously, guys, like before I even show it to you, uh, I, I was like, I want to get that jacket. I just know I can't because I, we just never have it. Um, but it's, oh, it's not even this one. Sorry. But when, when my jacket comes, you'll see which one I'm talking yeah. about. I, okay. I'm just like head over heels for it. Oh, <laughs> this i texted my essay straight away I said, <laughs> if there's one thing that i should wear from chanel it's a pair of denim shorts i live mm -hmm. in them <laughs> and they are so rare so when i said i was like oh my gosh i think they're about a thousand odd singapore dollars at four thousand i can't re remember if i put the price but in the scheme of things, they are crazy expensive jean shorts. But for everything else in Chanel, they are reasonable. So yeah. I texted my essay. I said, oh my gosh, if there's anything I want, <laughs> this is what I want. I want a pair of bougie <laughs> Chanel denim shorts. And the same thing as the other item, uh, the shoes. She said, oh, these are going to be hard. Uh, these yeah. are yeah. highly in demand. And I can I can understand why in Singapore it is just it's just the things that we wear here. We wear shorts. We're always in denim shorts or denim jeans. So I don't think I will have a chance to get this. But if you are a denim shorts kind of person, girl, guy, that middle one. Oh, um, I know. I was just looking at the middle one. I like the middle one. And the one. button is so cute. Yeah, oh, I need it so badly. <laughs> You know why it's high in demand? Because they probably only ordered two of each size. So yeah. your size, which is very popular size, would be gone. Because they have the frequent ready-to-wear buyers who would have claimed it all already. Like those yeah. VIPs. <laughs> yeah. So these, if that you is were why. the yeah the runway, they were uh, wearing like big coats, the bag, and long leggings. And these jeans were hidden underneath mm -hmm. everything so only when you scroll through the app you're like oh my gosh it's fall winter there are a pair mm -hmm. of denim shorts oh unfortunately for me or fortunately for my wallet may not be able to but i i love this so this is definitely the other sec the third thing that i texted my essay i said <laughs> i'm surprised that i actually found a few things <laughs> No, this is a good one because I, you know, I guess our minds now are kind of like that Elmez calculator brain as well. I would say this is not too far off of, a, you know, a pair of shorts from Elmez either. 
it's probably still more expensive, but it is it is different though. I mean, Chanel ready to wear is always more appealing in in some way. Like it's just a button or already alone is. <laughs> Yeah. And I feel like the cutting is a bit more feminine with Hermes. Um, I I think, and that's just my personal opinion, I think that their cut is a bit more simple and usually very straight, which you would argue, you would think that, oh, a straight body would like that. No, I need I need my clothes to give me shape. <laughs> so if the clothes have no shape, then I can't, you know, I have to make, I have to work so much harder to make it work, right? So um so yeah, I think price wise it's actually reasonable. Like you said, I would totally if she get if she calls you, I, I think you should totally get it. I would fly there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, this is mine. Okay. So this is the card uh, the um, something small to start with. I think the next one is the slide that I'm like, oh, that's my jacket. But anyway, so this is the pullover and I like it. It's very nice it has a lot of different cc's on but the cc is very subtle too which you can still wear this to work i don't think it's inappropriate there's a, a touch of pink on the collar and throughout the jack uh, throughout the um, the little sweater and it's cashmere and the price is very friendly for cashmere because mm. i don't know the last time i wore or bought a cashmere at Hermes, although i don't only bought the short version recently i remember this this last season was more expensive and i was like oh i was actually kind of shocked <laughs> that it was more expensive um so this is not so far off and the only issue maybe for this one is that it's a bit cropped for so it might not be suitable for everyone because i think even on this model it kind of ro rode up a little bit on her i think this is a good jacket for you i don't know i can definitely see oh you like this jacket oh okay. I do, uh, not not jacket sorry this um pullover yeah yeah i like it i like it too we don't have it i think oh. we didn't order this one we ordered a short sleeve with buttons oh this is so nice we didn't i don't think we ordered this one i would have you could pull this off with your slim arms and it'll look really <laughs> like yeah it's yeah. cute yeah i would totally wear this like i mean i could wear this now because it's getting so cold Ah, uh, I'm I'm yeah. in the process of rotating my summer clothes to the back and then bring the wintry stuff out. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, not fun. Not fun for me because I don't like cold. Okay, so this is the jacket I was talking about. Oh my god, oh, it has wow. everything I like. So it has four pockets. Is a gazillion buttons. Oh wow! It's red and it's so cute. <laughs> I love this jacket. <laughs> wow. Uh, I yeah, I totally can on. see you in this jacket. This is... I know. If they had this in the black, it would be also like a black. Oh, if it the... was black. Wow. Red but stripes, red. The also, red looks yeah, really nice. <laughs> <sighs> but, you this know, I can one. I can pull off a red jacket. So, I totally... This is totally my jacket. Like, especially if they did it in black, I would buy both. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so nice. I just like how classic shape it is, but it's not so, it's also so, um, you know how with Balmain, especially they, they tend to like to really like suck it in. So it's not flexible for day to day wear, like on days that you're just wanting to eat more or you're just not on your best day. You want a jacket that feels comfortable, but it, when you put it on, it makes you feel like you're put together you're just like com more confident and you know it's a nice jacket so it will look nice on you automatically i feel like this is it the length is good it's not too cropped it's not too long it has four pockets i mean at least it looks like it's four pockets they have buttons on all the pockets on the sleeve in the front oh so nice i love this one <laughs> everyone's gonna go get it right oh. i'm gonna go get it <laughs> <laughs> Save it to you. <laughs> no, I I'm pretty sure it's already gone. Like I said, if they order any ready to wear, um, they would get one or two of each size. And I mean, there are people on my size. There are a lot of people that are on my size here, so it would be gone already. I'm sure. Because mm. the launch was a week and a half ago, so it would be gone oh, by now. It's gone. Yeah. <laughs> It's gone. Yeah, I know. Already, unless they 
are not in yet and it, there, it's not claimed yet, then maybe I have a chance. Who knows? Did you tell your essay <laughs> about this? I, well, I didn't because I just thought it would be gone. Right. <sighs> and I didn't see it when I was there. Mm. Yeah. This is a hot piece, so I don't think it would be there. Like, they wouldn't leave it on the floor. If it did come in, they would probably just leave it behind. When they think a client will want it, they will probably bring it up. That's probably one of those pieces. They wouldn't just leave this on the floor, I don't think. That's that's my assumption. I don't know. If you guys have tried this or seen this, let me know. I think it's yeah. stunning. It's pretty. The red yeah. is well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I also like, so I, I selected three jackets, I think. And I was surprised at um, a slightly more reasonable pricing they are at this season. But not just that, because they didn't just put any buttons. I like it when they do the, the real CC button, which is special. That's why you buy your Chanel jacket, not just for the tailoring, not just because it's Chanel, but it, you know, their buttons are like, it's what's so special about Chanel ready to wear, in my opinion, that makes you spend tens of thousands of dollars on their jacket is the buttons. So this one, I love how um, kind of utilitarian it is, but mm. it's totally wearable. It's a slightly oversized jacket but i think if you just got it in either a size down or if you just buy it in your regular size but wear it as an outerwear piece um totally totally cute and i love that you can cinch it in because it does come with the belt so you can actually just make that as your outfit like button it up cinch it in it's totally cute and uh, very, very reasonable for the weather that we have here. Again, this also has four pockets, and these are all very functional, very large pockets. It's just so cool. Very yeah. cool. I like this. Actually, when I saw it, I was thinking, oh, this would make a really, a, like, how do you say, like a, boy, like a boyfriend jacket. You know, it mm -hmm. looks like you're wearing mm -hmm. your, your, your partner's huge men's jacket, but feminine yeah I thought, yeah i had a feeling you would pick this i when i yeah when i was scrolling i was like oh, i think she would go with this jacket <laughs> yeah it's it's really nice uh gray houndstooth is very classic i feel like this you know anybody anybody that buys this can wear it for a long time it will not really go out of style i mean maybe the broad kind of oversized um cut will be in and out but in general if you do wear it kind of as a coat then mm. that's fine you know? i don't think it'll go out of style i think this kind of really relaxed oversized jacket will stay because i don't know about you i don't know if anybody wants to wear a singed in jacket <laughs> you know for... well, no, some people do I, I i like both looks yeah, but I this like look it. it's just so relaxed. It's, it is, yeah. yeah. It's a it's a comfortable jacket. It's a mm. comfortable comfortable jacket that looks very snatched. Yes. Yeah. And then you can get the matching bags. So all the tweets that they have this season, they have also the matching bags, which is quite nice if you like to be matchy matchy. So this jacket is very similar in a way that it has that slightly casual vibe. Again, those four large pockets, tons of buttons. Uh, this one does have kind of that sleeve with the um, with the cuff because this one is more straight cut on the sleeve, whereas this one the cuff is you know kind of more. I don't know how to describe the cuff, but you know it gives you that more feminine shape in a way. Mm -hmm. um, what else? It's just nice, very nice tweed. Um, just this is more high fashion though because the pockets like. Yes. Stand out more asymmetrical, yeah. yeah. But it's totally it's still wearable. I feel like if even if you think that it's too fashion, I, I mean, I totally would wear this as a as well as a jacket, as a so jacket. It's an outerwear. So mm -hmm. um, I still prefer the second one. So this would I be, do too. I do. Yeah, this is this is nice. The more I look yeah. at it, I'm like, yes, I do too. Well. This was my order. This was my first choice, second choice, mm -hmm. third choice. Third choice. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, this was my last one, last choice for the jackets. Because, again, I like the buttons. 
This one is slightly more feminine. It almost gives me a little bit of Balenciaga vibe, like that hourglass. Um, very nice houndstooth, black and white, so very classic. And yeah, she was the girl who was carrying the Deauville. Ah. Actually, yeah, that, that kind of like crossbody necklace. Oh my gosh. I don't... Those are just too extra. <laughs> the crossbody <laughs> necklace. But it's cute. I like that tweet on it, though. And I think that was it for the selections. We went through a lot of stuff. And so I want to draw your attention to next month's calendar now. So next month is next week <laughs> already. It's so fast. It's October. Oh, I my know. gosh. It's crazy. Anyway, so next month is a long month. So we have a lot of stuff planned for you guys. And as you can see, we have two guesses coming on our show next month. So we have My Closet Travels on the 8th or the 7th here. And uh, Dale's Addiction on the 28th, 29th. And yeah, lots of fun stuff to talk about. <laughs> yeah wow Can, I, I still cannot believe it's already it's already october like you blink your eyes it's it's october i know i i was just with you not too long ago and i was wearing a scarf as my top because it was so hot and now i'm freezing <laughs> <laughs> oh wow we oh, hope you enjoyed that let us know like are you i mean i see some comments already like some people buying some things but if any of you are thinking of getting some stuff from this season, let us know. Com put a comment below. I, I'm right at the bottom. Let me pull this one from Sharon. I got the tweed brooch and the leather heart earrings. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Waiting for the tweed CC brooches. Necklace, I only like the ones from the last collection, but so expensive. Yeah. Hoping to see if they go on sale. Yeah, possible, you know, because maybe the price is just so crazy now that some may... Be available when they do their um, private sales well that's the that's the thing I don't know anymore either because um, it just in general it just seems like we're not getting a ton of stock and I don't know if they're actually making as much unit wise worldwide mm. and how much overflow will there be I'm just wondering but I do agree that usually the the more chunky stuff like the non not everyday wear type of costume will be the ones left behind usually. So you have a higher chance of finding them. So yeah, you can definitely wait till then. But yeah, the price is where I kind of, I don't know. I don't want to say draw the line because I'll always make an exception. Like once in a while, I'll be like going crazy and just really like it to the point that it didn't matter. I would just buy it. But um, yeah, for this collection, I just was... Oh, I don't know. I couldn't pick anything. I did like the brooch, like you said. The this the they also yeah they had this tweed CC brooch which I also which I also liked, and they had the heart one too, which I also liked. But just the price was a bit high. Oh, I see the next question from Luan. So I actually uh, I bought the boots in the summer. And I haven't worn it yet, but I know they are comfortable because I keep trying them on just to be sure. And then I keep like sometimes I would style clothes with them, but not really wearing them outside. And I, I know they're really comfortable. So I don't know. I'm sure I can drive in them because, I mean, I drive in heels sometimes. Um, so the boots, I don't think it would be an issue. Although I think I know what you mean, because sometimes when a boot is too chunky and too heavy, then makes your feet hard to change gears oh, if you have to do it really the fast. accelerator yeah. and brake. Mm. Yeah, so I would say I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> when even you test it out. Yeah. But then that's the thing. If I drive, though, I unless I'm also walking a lot after driving to somewhere, uh, then I probably would be wearing different shoes. Because unless I'm always walking outside in the rain, that's when I would wear it, right? If I'm driving somewhere and I'm just in and out, I might not have to wear them. Mm. Yeah. I see another comment here from Shadow Momo. I got the Chanel 22 in tweet, multicolor font last week. And it's oh. like the Chanel plushie. Mm. Really loving it. 
Ooh. I'm getting it's I'm getting into the Chanel 22. I'm starting to like understand the need for a larger bag. I think it's also the fact that it's such an easy larger bag. Because not all mm. large bags are easy. It's either too heavy or yep. um, it's really too large. Because you can have a larger bag that just fits still enough, but with extra, just a bit of extra room. And I think that's where the 22 is. And it's also very close, flat profile. Oh, I miss it. Anyway. <laughs> Okay. Should I go all the way up? Yeah, you can go all the way up. Okay. I'm still at the bottom of the comments. So yeah, we're gonna get two guests next month. We're doing, I guess, the same kind of uh, method for next month. So with them, because they're the first time. I haven't met my closet travels before. I mean, I've, I don't, I don't um, interact, and I think I just subscribed to her. Um, but it will be fun. And then Dale's addiction, I think we do interview style with them as well. Yeah, we like Ooh. to do that with our new guests now because it um I mean, unless we already personally know them, I think yeah, I think we because with Clara we didn't really do that because we already personally know her. Um <laughs> same with Isabel. So uh, everyone else I think we kind of didn't. Oh mm. no, I, I also know um Siv also. So I oh, that's true. with her that. either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you kind of just know them, so it's kind of like didn't think of doing that kind of interview style. But um yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be nice. It always kind of brings out surprising elements, I find, every time we bring a new guest in and you kind of learn something about them. Because you, you only see what you see and what you think you see. And so when they say something that is not what you thought, then you know, it can be kind of um, interesting. I also reached out to um, Colorful Noor, Colorful mm. Noor again, because everybody was like, get, I, get Eileen in. So um, she has replied and she will try. Uh, oh. I think the last time she said that she was really busy and with a lot of changes. I think she just changed her job and all that. So this time she said she'll try, but I will reach out to her again because though she may not be creating as much, like a lot of content online, I think, you know, day-to-day -day life, she is very, very, like very busy. So yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, so I will try. We'll try because I, this is not like the first time uh, when we requested, hey, who should we bring on board? Everyone said, oh, this person, this person, this person. And Eileen has come up several times. Um, and it's just because of a busy, busy schedule. So we'll try. We'll try mm. to get her in. Okay. Uh, there's one comment. So it's not a question. Joe, I ordered a budget tweed bag from Urban Revival to satisfy the tweed itch. You know, that's yes. a great way. It's, it's a smart way of doing it too. And plus you can just hand it down to your daughter when, <laughs> when she's old enough to play with bags. But yeah, like I... Uh, I think we mentioned that before, right? Both you and I, we tried material bags for fabric bags. I mean, for three three over times now, and we're just like, oh, it's not for us. I've tried it on the <laughs> Deville. I've tried it on the Dior Montaigne, mm. the denim Chanel, and let me think. Three. Is there another one? Ah. Uh... I probably there was okay. <laughs> I can't remember right now. And these just didn't work out. Like they just yeah. Um, they didn't not not that the bags were no good. It's internal fear, lifestyle, and everything. They just didn't work out. And it, it here it is again. Like we've got this beautiful set of tweed bags, but the bag that I sent to my essay and said I'd like to check this out came out to be a leather bag. Because, oh. yeah, I mean, the khaki bag is leather, right? I did not ask yeah. for tweed um, bags at all. It just, it's beautiful to look at, but the high price point is just a little bit too much for um, my peace of mind on a daily basis because I'll be so worried if I snatch it, you know, snag it against um, the side of the door. So I would love a Chanel plushie bag, <laughs> <laughs> but... 
from a practical like from my practical life, so I think it's a little challenging. Yeah, I I'm always so tempted every time I mm. uh these tweet. I think but I yeah, I, I I have to agree. I tried it also in three different bags and the last two I didn't even wear because I was oh. so afraid to use it. I mean I'm not that afraid, but I, I just make so okay, so this is what usually happens, right? I, I think I decide to wear it that day. I start putting my things in. Of course it looks good with the outfit. That's why I picked it. But after I put my things in and I'm like, oh, but who knows? Maybe it will rain today or oh where wherever I'm going, maybe we're gonna eat something weird. And I just take my things out and put it in another bag. So every time I want to use it, I end up not using it. So in the end, I never ended up using it. In that mm. way, I am scared of using it, right? So um, yeah, I just, I just wouldn't, I don't think it would work out. I probably should not make those super expensive mistakes anymore. So yeah, Urban Revival is the way. <laughs> urban Revival. You know, I'm going to pull this comment from Shadow Momo. She says, wait, use Colonial mm. Carbon Pro Spray. You know, I think what I would do, just maybe get my, like a fear of these kind of cloth bags maybe i should buy an urban revival tweet bag and use colonial carbon pro spray on it first and see <laughs> how it goes because one of the things that i have fear of is using stuff on my expensive bags i would use really gentle material like um like leather cleaners and moisturizers to clean the bag but these kind of like bag coatings I never, I never use them on any of my canvas bags, leather bags, of course, cloth bags. I just, I'm afraid it will damage the bag. So yeah, maybe I should try it on a cheap tweed bag, test it out and see how the bag reacts to colonial. I don't know. The problem is when you know that it's an Urban Revival bag, you will just trash it anyway because it's <laughs> something that you can do with it. Yeah, but then that's a I good don't know if you would actually good... go through... But that's a good testament to the Colonial Carbon Pro Spray, right? Because though it's a you know fairly reasonable price bag, it's still cloth, it's still tweed or material. You spray the bag and then trash it in a way, like go through rain, get you know eat curry with it, and see how it behaves. And you go like, oh, if it works, I wonder. I don't think if it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like if you actually do trash it, it won't work. I think you still have to be careful even after you treat it because um wasn't we were talking about shoes in one episode and i remember i i asked well you guys and then i also asked my husband and later on because he does have some repellent for his shoes too which he started using at first but now he no longer is because you have to treat it every couple weeks or something two three oh. weeks which is such a hassle. And are you really going to do that? And also... Um, I would you know, if it was a, a Chanel tweed. Um, yeah, but you know what? If if I get tweed, it'll be a Chanel jacket. I think that's where I'm mm. going to draw the line at. Like bags, it's just not the easiest to... I don't know. It's not that I don't care. It's not that I can't take care of it, but I just... Okay, I you know. know what? You know what? You know what? I Once I get my tweed... Chanel sneakers. Mm. I will test it out with the Colonial Carbon. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think that would be something that is worth trying out because they are shoes, right? So Shadow Momo, so far no damage, and the tweet still maintains its softness and mm. texture. Because <laughs> you know, with shoes, my mental state is like it's gonna get dirty. So if a, and I accept it because it's gonna be on my feet, right? But what if this shoe can prolong its pristineness? Sorry, what if this spray could prolong its pristineness? Yeah, why not, huh? It will get me get that fear of tweed <laughs> out of me. Try it out and let us know. But for shoes, I, I think it's acceptable to be a bit dirty, though. First, I need to get the shoes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got one here. Fashion cabin. I feel like. I only wear my tweed bags for colder weather. Is anyone else like that? Mm. I feel the same. 
However, I never even still wore my bag. So I, I guess my my answer is kind of not count any anyway. But I, I feel like tweed especially not all fabric bag but tweed especially is such a wintry fabric that mm, i don't know if i would really wear in the dead of summer like if it was on a cooler summer day like early june mm. late august early september yes okay but anywhere in between it's just i don't know it just feels too hot to wear those mm. yeah because i guess when you hold it as well it's yeah warm Right, it, yeah. it absorbs the heat. So it's not a material that I will want to wear when it's sunny outside or even hold against my body. Like if it's sunny, I want to be, you know, feeling material like this. Yeah. Which is so soft and airy and light. Yeah. Hmm, possible. Riza Logi, hello from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Hello. Let's see. Okay. I have a question down here. Corrine, does Chanel provide spa service like Hermes? I don't know if they have spa service, but they do have the warranty, that five-year warranty for their bags now. But mainly that's for repairs. I don't think they take in bags to refresh. Yeah, as far as I know, they don't. In fact, Chanel has probably a reputation of not very good service when it comes to repairs. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, it takes a long time. And um, I'm not saying that they don't repair the things well, but it's it's just a lengthy process. It's not something that they like to do. And it's always case by case. Um, so I doubt they will offer a spa service anymore. I think they used to. Um, because I remember speaking to the director from the my store here, but she's no longer with the company. And back then, she told me about a story about how one of her uh, clients brought in a bag that was so dirty that even though she usually accommodates anybody who tries to bring vintage bags to spa, which they did before, that one she just couldn't because it was just so dirty that she was like, can you just please to get back I will oh. yeah <laughs> it was so nasty. I think I, I believe they used to but no longer yeah mm. okay no I mean it's if it's nasty it's nasty right <laughs> <laughs> no it's so weird why would people do that <laughs> oh my gosh the way she oh, described it to me is as, as if like someone threw up in there and then like I don't stomp it and whatever like it's just weird <laughs> like it was just very bad apparently All right, from Diana, what can be done with press marks on bags, especially for super soft leather bags? So painful mm. to see those marks, thanks. Mm, depends on the press mark. So mm, I had my Chanel camera bag many years ago and I sold it surprisingly because it actually had really bad press marks. But the press marks were so deep and almost ingrained that even though I tried this hack, which I'll share, do it only if you're brave. I did it. It didn't really help with the press marks because the way that it has been pressed, it's like as if the cushion on the inside is flattened already. Uh, but there is some who gave me advice and I did see it like work a little bit where you take a steamer, like, um, you know, when you steam your clothes, um, you put it like, kind of put a cloth over your bag and you steam that section of the uh, de deflated puff, it does kind of depuff the bag. But do this very like little bit. Don't put the, the, the steamer too close to the bag. Just a little bit by little bit. Open and check, open and check, keep doing it. It worked for me uh, just a little bit, but it was so ingrained, like I said, that the press mark was still there. Um. The other thing to take note about doing this hack is if your bag is of shiny material, um, say it's glossy, then you cannot do this hack because it will kind of mattify that, that quilt. So if it's only regular, natural lambskin, like some of your typical lambskin bags, then it will, it will be okay. 
But if that landscape has a coating, like an iridescent coating or a little shiny coating, it will remove the coating <laughs> for some reason. Not remove it. It will sort of, maybe the heat of the steam will unshine the shine a little bit. So that's something mm, that I, think yeah. I I realize when it comes to steaming um, leather. It's a hack. You can probably Google it or like YouTube it. Uh, I've known that some people say it works for them. Um, but there are some risks involved in doing this. Yeah, it's like um, it's like when you wear leather shoes in the rain, it kind of like removes the shine after it dries up, right? Yeah. And but that that also is it means that maybe the leather has really soaked in a lot of the liquids, and so it's mm. quote unquote damaged it. But it does re regain some of the shine af after you polish it and stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's hard. I think, Diana, the, the best way is to avoid, which is not always possible. I think the issue is that even though the leather might be able to puff back up, like, or not puff back up, the leather might be able to de-wrinkle, but the material inside, which is the, like like the, the foam or, or the mm. whatever cushioning things that they use, that, if it's already dented, it might not have the same capability of springing back out so i think that's maybe why there is a limitation mm. um yeah i think yeah and it depends on the leather too soft leather yeah soft or hard leather it's probably the same hard leather will probably just have more of a scuff mark versus mm. actual kind of denting um you can try and bring it <clears throat> back to a spa and see. Like if you if you don't want to uh, do like spend money on it, then <clears throat> home tricks can work. Just be really, mm. really careful. Uh, I, I've tried it on my uh, camera bag. It did work like maybe 10% uh, because this, the, the, like I said, this mark was so deep on and deep and long. So it's been ingrained there for a while that may... Mm -hmm. Probably already damaged the uh, or uh, creased the foam on the inside. Mm -hmm. Another way, if the press mark is not too too deep and it's still there, but it's kind of like bump, you could use your finger and yeah. just gently rub it. I do find that uh, that helps to de, de, de <laughs> inflate them, um, not inflate, like smoothen out the mark overall uh, and make it less obvious. So that could help. Yeah, I think it's a combination of the heat and also just a little bit of your own oils, kind of mm -hmm. that moisture. It's not really moisture, but it's kind of just your your hands. Um, that kind of gives it that ability to bounce back a little bit. I will say, uh, is, especially if it's not something that you've been denting for a while, like if, mm -hmm. it, if it's, say, a chain was denting on the leather and it was like that for like a whole month, then chances are it's going to be quite hard. But if it was just literally like it happened when you came home and you put down your bag and then next like thing you know, half an hour later, yeah, it got mm -hmm. dented. Usually if you just, you know, take out the chain and just leave it alone, it will usually puff back up more or less. And then if you need an extra little bit of help, you can do with your fingers. Yeah. Yeah. So Which is why I, I I have to say, um, <laughs> you, this usually happens to lambskin bags, which, you know, that's why for a long time I was very afraid of buying lambskin bags. But now that I've gotten, gotten used to it, I'm okay with um, how it behaves. But it's also because I'm used to knowing how to care for it, like yeah. how not to put the chains on it, how, how to store it, and how to put it aside or whatever like uh, even when I use it like you just have that conscious effort of knowing to care for it and that really helps so it's until you're more yeah until you have that kind of um, awareness about it because otherwise it's still better to stick with bags that you can be more careless about then you don't have to worry about having to fix some sort of damage but having said that, I feel like with lambskin, it's fixable. Yeah, with, it is. I, 
and yeah, because when you get a dent or a mark on caviar, like those, um, yeah, it's gone. Yeah, um, embossed leather. It's really hard to fix because it's yeah. either a scrape or it's chipped, and it's just um because that that embossing is a protection on or it already coats the leather. So though it is hardier, you know, from the when you look at it, it's hardier. But if you get a real like damage on it, it's pretty much. It's not pretty much gone, but it's really, really difficult to fix. But with lambskin, mm -hmm. yes, it's got the, you know, dings and dents here and there. But just your finger, because it's super soft, it's more forgiving. So pros and cons, I guess, yeah, for both leathers. Depends on which is your preference. So super soft leather, I feel like it's ten, it tends to be more fixable. Mm -hmm. True, true. I think we skipped this one, or did we? What is the one main issue with tweet bags that doesn't work for you? It's neither of those things for me because, again, that never happened to me. But I, I have a fear that that happens to me. I think the fear mm. is the main thing for me. Uh, because maybe because the tweed bags or the fabric bags that uh, I ended up getting. Well, there was only one tweed bag, really. Is it? Yeah, one tweed bag that I got ever got and I like never even used. Uh, I always sort of like play with it in, in front of the camera videos and all that. Yes, but I never actually took it out and used it. Never, ever. And I, that is just, yeah, from the stemming from the fear of something happening to it. So it's almost being too careful. Mm. <laughs> I guess the best way to not damage it is to not use it, which is what I said to prevent that from happening but i'm really like i just literally prevented it from happening because i didn't even use it didn't use so, it yeah well for all my bags like all my material bags um the denim the the denim the dior as well as the deville i've used them all like uh and brought them out so my main issue Though I do say, <clears throat> you know, scraping, staining, uh, sorry, scraping, snagging. Actually, the main issue that I have is stains. It's, mm. I, I am, I use my bags, but I am still careful enough. I'm mindful enough to not whip my bags around and hit corners. Even if I am using my leather bags, I am mindful. Like uh, as I stand, you know, if I see a corner, naturally my brain says, you know, step two. It, it just comes second nature to not bump into things, not wear um, clothing that has sharp belts. It's just natural. But stains are something that I cannot avoid because I would go to a, a hawker store, a local store, and I'll eat food with sauces. And <laughs> no matter how natural it is for me to, you know, put my bag on my lap and cover it, there are the, the fear of the stains is significant. Maybe I move it aside, and then no matter how careful I am, I will somehow find a dot of soya sauce stain on my jacket. I'm like, mm. where did you come from? So, even though I am careful not slurping all my food everywhere, I still get dots of sauces on my shirt. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's a nightmare. Or or maybe I'm a little fiddly with the chopsticks and it a piece of chicken nugget, <laughs> a chicken drumstick hits on the table and it hits on my lap and the pump, I get a stain. So I think between snagging and stains, stains is number one when it comes to bags. Mm. You know, it's funny that you say that because I always am not afraid to wear white because I, you know, it's not that it never happens to me that I get a stain, but it's very rare. But the issue is people around me are not like that. <laughs> don't, be, so, don't be next to me, okay? <laughs> yeah, well, but they can. Like, if, if, <laughs> if we're going oh. out together, well, this I'm going to dress for the occasion because I just don't trust them. <laughs> so <laughs> it goes with the bag, I guess. But um, I think the easiest, easiest solution is to just always bring a protective, like, I know it's an extra thing to bring, but, like, just something nylon -y. Just enough to cover your bag, like you know, shopping the shopping. I always bring one. Bags. Yeah, I always to put your bag inside, which yeah. is why I think, uh, like for me, prevention is always key. So 
like when we were at the sushi restaurant and not that I don't trust, uh, you know, some of the friends that we had at that day beside us. So there was my husband on one side and a member on the other side, but my bag, I didn't put it on my husband's side. You know why, but <laughs> I put it on the side closest to the member one. And even then I had to like tuck it in. I used my leg to kind of push it so that it would angle so that most of the bag is tucked under the table because, oh, and I, in the, in the end, eventually, because I felt like everyone was loosening up and everything, and I just didn't want to think about it. In the end, I even took out my reusable shopping bag and I wrapped it in it. <laughs> because I'm just telling you, like, I know leather can still be cleaned and especially Togo is, you know, black Togo is fine, but I just rather, rather just clean, uh, nylon bag than to clean my bag because you know at the end of the day i'm the one cleaning it so it's true it's that's true. why so it's, it's um it's like it's unavoidable like these are just accidents it's not that the person is like or, or you yourself is like sloppy yeah. it's just an accident it's like i'm holding like chopsticks. some people have more accidents than it. others though and the and the tuna <laughs> <laughs> and the tuna in the roll <laughs> drops at a higher yeah, degree okay. onto the soya sauce and you're like i was careful yeah. <laughs> but that dang piece of tuna in the middle of this maki decides to creep out <laughs> yes and slightly splatter on the soya sauce and gaboom my shirt it yeah so stains <laughs> to answer your question <laughs> <it> stains <laughs> I, I I totally I know um usually I'm the one trying to avoid other people doing it to me so um but it's just it's so funny um yeah I think for me that maybe for me it's not so much just saying because I I will prevent it from happening by being prevent preventative um but yeah it's it's just general wear and tear and just you know just at the end of the day, I just can't get past myself. So <laughs> that's probably it. But I will say one more thing actually about this is that if one day I decide that I'm just gonna buy a tweed bag because I just I it's just can't live with myself for not getting that one, for example, then I will have to make that conscious decision that it's my trash tweed bag. Like not that I would trash it, but that if anything happens to it, it's meant to be used. And I have done that with Fashetta when I was, mm. like, I just bought my first Fashetta bag without even knowing that Fashetta is supposed to patina. I didn't know that. Mm. But I, as I was starting to use it and noticing that happening, I was okay with it because I was like, oh, okay, it'll be my bag that I will just use. use. And I think that's the key to, um, if if I ever decide to get a tweed bag that I can't, not buy um sorry that i cannot not buy then yeah i will have to sort of make that mental decision that it could be your yolo bag it could be like the white bag that you always wanted and you said this is <laughs> yeah. the one i'm gonna i'm going to accept it if it's not pristine as the day i bought it yeah it well too bad they didn't have that top the little square top handle in white because that was really I I wanted it in white only wow. if they had it, which of course they didn't also. Um, okay, let me pull one yeah. question coming from Miles. Do either of you have a Chanel bag on your wish list? Uh -huh. Okay, is this a wish list for the current season or like general oh, wish list a general chanel bag wish list do you have one for general okay but what do you have one for the season um well i do but i know they're not available so i i almost like you, you want something that you can't get so what's the point mm. that's the white one i did um yeah the white well i actually my first choice would be to pick that first one which is you know that very square very square vintage size mini. Um, but, you know, my second choice would be that one with the top handle, which would be very, very close to the first choice, only because I knew it came in white. And I do like a top handle on anything. So I'm, I was very open to either of those. 
I think they were pretty close. Actually, no, I think the, the top handle one is more expensive. But um, aside from that, I, I kind of am eyeing. I don't know why I'm eyeing because I said that a long time ago that I would never buy one, but I kind of am eyeing a extra mini cocoa handle. It somehow got creeped up in my radar because mm -hmm. how cute it looks on people. Even though I know it fits like not very much. How small? How big is but it? But it's how so small? popular. Huh? How small is it? Is it like... The size doesn't look so small, but it's just because if you... I mean, I, I own three Coco handles, so I know how they can get very constricting because technically they are a bigger bag, like the one that I had. But um, you can't get through the separation of the compartment. So you're limited to the shape of the items that you put. And with the extra mini, because it's even smaller, so height-wise it's less, and then space-wise it's less. And it's so compact that it's very awkward. Apparently it wouldn't even fit, I think it wouldn't even fit like a pro phone if you had a lot of things in it. Like if you had a Max phone, just forget about it. It's just not. Wait until um, Apple creates a flip phone. Oh, well, <laughs> by then Apple. it might be discontinued. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why my essay said that they are a Chanel. Apparently Chanel was not going to make it again this season, but they still made it. And so there's something went, something is going on for sure. Like they were mm. told that they were not going to make it, but then they did make it this season. So who knows if they'll keep making it. Interesting. Yeah. So it's an extra mini cocoa handle that's on your sort of like a creeped up into your wish list. It creeped up, but you know, I, yeah. I mean, there's always the regular um, top handle which I already got, but like I, I always wanted it in the color, mm. like a white or a gray, of course. A white would be scary and non skin, but you know, I would still op I was still open to it because it does have that top handle. And uh, of course, after our trip together in Seattle and trying on the Deauville, that too, the small mm. Deauville size. Yeah, yes. yes. It's very much on my radar. I did try it actually, but we only had um it was a display one it looked kind of not old but it kind of looked like it was very tried on even though the color was okay it was like a very very cool gray color which surprisingly didn't work for me because it's no. too cool or too muddy somehow uh but the size was great the size the size for, for me what do i, I have i have the, the price i don't even know how much it is what, what's that for the for the deville yeah i can't remember the price i did send it to my essay to tell her i said oh mm. i kind of want to check this out but the season the current season they only had blue and pink so right after i texted my essay i said oh i i really like this deville the size is nice i'd like to check it out she texted me back and said oh would you be interested in a pink and i'm like mm. no a pink yeah no don't it is me. really pretty though so i did say that if a darker color comes, um, I would like to check it out. So that I guess that you can say that's on my general wish list for a Chanel bag. What's on my ultimate Chanel bag wish list is still a green, like the perfect, mm. the perfect green bag. Not the yeah. khaki, not the yeah, not khaki, not just a just a perfect green, like a Starbucks green or I don't know, oh, just okay. like, like a green, a good green bag, like a like a green. So it can be any bag. I am not particular. Um, I did think of a Chanel classic flap in this kind of green that would be very, very spendy. But I'm open to seasonal, uh, seasonal designs as well. A mini reissue in green would be perfect. Yeah. I think that would be yeah, quite a nice. Yeah, a, quite a nice uh, a design for this kind would of brighter you, color. Would you be open to kind of like a mint mint green? Mint green. Yeah. Cruz, mint Cruz green. is coming out with a mint, mint green. green. Yeah, green. I'll, I'll show you. 
I you think... know, even my Doraemon green. <laughs> yeah, but that's 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 green green. But mint green is kind of like you know how mint green is, right? It's lighter. It might. Oh, it's not quite like that, but it's similar. Um, mind you, again, even though they have, you know, Chanel will make those. It doesn't mean that they will always carry them at your store. So who knows if they'll be available. Where did I see it, though? I'm trying to remember because I didn't take a screenshot. That would be my um, other bag mm. on my uh, raid. Uh, wish. This is a... Uh, this is seriously this is wishful thinking because <laughs> green you know i can't, can't tell Shana, Shana, i like the green bag uh, uh but the last season they did come out with quite a bit uh it's just uh, one i did i guess fortunately and unfortunately for me green is actually a really popular color for handbags <laughs> and, and uh, it also got compounded by the fact that it is the color of the year True. but um cruise which is coming up in november usually november december uh will have they'll be doing the um you know like the is it the monte carlo like kind of like that theme mm. and it's very colorful so i saw the mint green thing <laughs> i can't remember right. where i saw it now yeah it they have uh i saw they have that mint mint green top handle they also had a white for some reason. I but I don't know if it's a pure white or, or if it's kind of like a variation of a white. I saw pink. But I now I don't remember where I saw it, so I can't even find it. <laughs> yeah. So though that that's to answer you, Miles. I I have a green bag in my wish list. Not particular on um the design. Maybe, okay, maybe particular, maybe. I prefer a classic looking bag. Uh, wouldn't get something too large, like a Chanel 19 in such a bright color. So it would probably be a small, mid-sized bag just to be, you know, it's it's that pop of color, but Chanel in my collection. I think that would be perfect. And what else am I looking for? Yeah, I think that's about it. Those are the, like the two things that would be quite nice to add to my collection. Yeah, I'll show it to you if I find it. I honestly, I, I sometimes I just, you know how like on Instagram stories, you just click, click, click. But I, I definitely remember seeing it. I just don't remember where I saw it. What does everyone have in their like wish list? General wish list. Anybody looking for anything in Chanel? I mean... I feel like in the past six months, there's not as many Chanel, like, I mean, I, I know there's still, I mean, it's huge, huge fan base for Chanel, but I just get this sense that it's tapered down a little bit. Do you get this as well? Yeah, I, you know why? Because um, it's also because it's similar to what's happening to me. It's also because even though you know the collection has those things, but your store doesn't even have it. Mm. So it's almost like you you don't want to overwish because you don't even know if they'll have it. And even if they do carry, say, that style that you want, they'll have one or two in store. So your likelihood of getting one is... Either you're very lucky you were there at the right time when they just got it in, or you are not maybe not necessarily just a VIP, but like a very favorite client that your essay mm. will keep one for you. Because usually the any hot items are, and we're not just talking bags here, ready to wear everything, right? Anything, anything, hot items, popular items. And because they only get single digit amount of those things, right? Like I said, for shoes for whatever like they get one or two for each size if even so once it's gone it's gone so i almost feel like same for me i've always in the past i've always just hoped for the best which you know sometimes it worked out sometimes it didn't but i definitely feel like it's even harder now um not just not just because my essay left but also just the stock is really slow and mm. it's just you know the launch happened 
like official launch day happens, but that doesn't matter because there's nothing to look at. They might not even receive this the stock on launch day. So it's sort of crazy. Like you might go in and they'll have a couple of jewelry. That's it. Like it's just so ridiculous mm. that people are not excited anymore. And I, you know, I used to find that Instagram, uh, press forum, Facebook, it would be loads of information of people posting pictures well ahead of the launch day. Now you wait till after the launch day and still no more, no pictures. It's very mm. strange, but it, I think it's gotten to this point where it's so difficult to even get to see anything. It's just not available. Interesting. And what you just said, I'm looking at the comments. So we've got from Corrine moving away from Chanel due to the prices and lack of stock. Mm. It's like you dangle this carrot in front of us like, ah, and every time it's no high demand, no stock, and you don't hear back from your essay, you get hit several, several times. Actually, after a while, you're just like, nah, forget it. I'm just, it's, it's frustrating. It's disappointing. It's a bit annoying. So mm. here's another one from Apple. Agree, my store don't have anything. Yeah, they just don't have anything. Tammy is, is saying, like... don't have anything on the wish list. Pricing is high. Mm -hmm. Waiting for Hermes instead. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I'm reading more. Miles said, last time I went to the Chanel Sydney boutique, no queues, even on a Saturday. The hype has died down. The hype yeah. could have died down from two aspects, you know. I feel like exactly. one is, firstly, it is died down because of the prices. But it's also died down because I'm just fed up. Like, I, mm -hmm. I used to be so excited. But when you message your essay and they'll say like, you know, you immediately you get slapped like, uh, no lah. Mm. Very high demand. It's sort of like you have all this excitement of looking at the collection and you're just like, no, nothing for you. You're not, <laughs> you're not, you're not, it's not even possible. So yeah, yeah. that is that, will, that kills the hype a bit, actually. It does. And I will comment on this too. So Corinne says, I plan on collecting a variety of MS bags instead. I get better quality. I agree for the price of Chanel. I agree, but I will say this too. And maybe this is just geographical where I am and just what I went through. But I will say I feel the same way about Hermes. Mm. It's, I, I feel like if, like it would be dishonest of me not to 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 say that because this is this is how I feel and I don't like to feel disappointed. But at the same time, I'm like, you know what? This is the expectation that I have now is that I have no expectation almost like I almost feel like it will happen if when it happens and sometimes there's a lot of luck and timing involved in fact it feels like it's all the time here and that has definitely been more uh, obvious since shortly after the pandemic started mm. but it definitely feels more intense now and it's just across all the brands that i i love like mm. lv i just stopped looking a while ago because no longer i no longer have an essay even so when you don't have an essay you just can't get even anything harder um, yeah it's it's you no know, you want to try <laughs> yeah so like i got the nano bag but that was my friend who got it for me she has an essay mm -hmm. but um chanel Hermes, i have essays but just like nothing is available. So I, I just feel very frustrated, you know? And every time I get something, I feel like I'm so lucky because, but it's just, just a normal thing. Like if you buy some, it, sh it should be available if- Yes, I get it. Bag. Sometimes I'm not even looking for bags and they're not available. So it's very Apple frustrating. 104, yeah. it's annoying to shop and agrees yeah. with Amy. This is an interesting comment from Elta. I think Chanel simply wants to whittle down to own to only the most elite clients. They don't want you or and me. Um, <laughs> not that I want to <laughs> You know, I feel like there is definitely that. I mean, VIPs will always be VIPs. They will always get the first dips. But I still felt like I had some opportunity to get some items. 
even though I am not nowhere near VIP previously. But now it's just, it's, I don't know. It's like even, it's even worse now. <laughs> like it is, it is worth cat because even if you're a VIP, let's say, right? I'm sure your store has more than two VIPs. Mm. Let's say your VIPs are all size 37 and a half. <laughs> There's only two <laughs> pairs of shoes in 37 and a half. I bet the so... VIPs are feeling it as well. <laughs> exactly. You I'm either be sure a VIP it. or a VVVIP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to be VVVIP. <laughs> Actually, you know, I have a friend who is, I believe she's a VIP. Even for her, she's like, I have to be there immediately because the other yeah. VIPs are going to get it. So yes. it's just... It's they a, struggle the same as we, but at least they they have maybe pur- more purchasing power than us even. <laughs> so, But it's the oh. same struggle. It's the same lack of stock across the board. And when they don't show up, but you show up and you were there and the stock is right in front of you, well, then you, you're really lucky because you showed up at the right time. But that's a lot of timing and luck. So sometimes you don't have to be a VIP to be able to buy those hot things, but literally you have to be there when it shows up. And it's not because they told you, sometimes it's just you showed up because you were just browsing. And which is why I said for a while now that I don't go on launch days anymore because it's useless. They have nothing on launch day. And sometimes it's also because they already pre-sold before the launch. So if they did happen to have some stock that came in, it was already pre-sold. So by the time the launch happens and your regular clients go in, nothing is available, only whatever is not sold. And then when more stock trickles in, that's when if you go in at that right time, then yeah, yeah you're kind of that lucky client. Well, this is <laughs> probably true, Sharon. Chanel's stock are kept for favorite mm-hmm. clients. To be it honest, is. it is fair because they spend so much on ready to wear other stuff other than bags and shoes. So they get first picks. Absolutely true. Like I would not spend 30,000 ringgit on a shirt where somebody who is a elite, elite, they will. So okay, like you can have the bag. <laughs> yes. But it's just, you know, I mean, we are also clientele and I guess we'll just have to wait for the, you know, the pickings at the end. Where, yeah. you know, for them, they are high fashion. Like, elites are high fashion. They want to be in the new outfit of the new season before the season is even launched. So, when it's launched and it's already trickled through the half season, they don't really want it anymore. So, I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there <laughs> hanging by the door and say, do you have any bags now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or 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 just like I said, I that day I happened to be in downtown so I decided to show up I didn't even know if my essay was working but he was because my essay is not full-time right so uh he was he happened to be there and we chatted and that's how I was able to give you some information but it's just it just felt very sad like there's nothing to look at (laughs) Mm. the stuff that there was to look at is just everybody didn't want right the larger size bags and the leftover colors and you know I I still got a feel of the collection but not the entire not the entire feel and definitely nothing that was popular that was left yeah Yeah. right time right place I think that's the tech that's the tactic we have to take be right there at the right time, at the right moment, not at the beginning of the season, maybe. Maybe mm-hmm. that's the fact that it has to change. You could probably try your luck, but maybe during the mid of the season, that's yep. when you sort of go in. You go like, is there anything else left? <laughs> is there yeah, a I just that go that might have very nonchalant in? now. I just go in and say, oh, I'm just yeah. through the browse. I just passed by downtown this week and... Just gonna look around and if they happen to have stuff that I'm interested, I'll buy. If not, which is why I said every time I go in, even though it's not to buy something, uh, I always, always still look at find, uh, sorry, costume jewelry because I'm always interested. But you know, lately, even costume jewelry, there's nothing. <laughs> yeah. That's how sad it feels. <laughs> there's nothing available, literally. Uh, okay, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you've missed the beginning, we went through the collection. I thought pretty thoroughly. At least we picked the best pieces. And it was really nice. It's a nice collection, but stock is the issue. 
And yeah, we'll see you next week. Oh, tomorrow week is... for the members. We have our members tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. And we're oh, going to talk about the... items that are not Hermes or Chanel. Like maybe it is time to sort of look at other things, which, you know, I am. I am always looking at other things. But maybe with all this, like, no stock, no charts, everything, I'm just a bit like, okay, I'm going to take a break from you a little bit and check out the other brands. And there are kind of few things that I I really like. And Amy picked out some stuff as well. Yeah, and I feel like sometimes those things I enjoy, not enjoy more, but like I actually use them more. So it, they are not only worth it, but they're very enjoyable too. They're fun. Yeah, we'll talk to you tomorrow, members. And next week, we have a special guest, which I should contact her back again. Totally forgot, like time just flew by. But yes, we'll see you next week, guys. All right, bye. bye.